Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. I'm Creative Katie, Karen Virtual. Today, I'm going to share some of my secrets for using small scale focals on an art journal page. If this is a problem you faced, you're going to want to watch. So here's a sneak peek of the finished page in my accidental art journal and this color combination, brilliant purple, cadmium red, and Prussian blue. That is a winner. You want to try that out too. So I'm breaking this page using, well, I have some cadmium red leftover paint and I am scraping it on the ungessoed raw page using a key card. Then I'm adding some brilliant purple because I'm thinking, oh, that goes well with it. Now, scraping paint is a very quick way of getting the paint on there. It dries almost instantaneously. And if you're looking for quick and easy, it couldn't get easier or quicker than this. So I'm just putting it on, playing with that key card. You get a very organic first coat, base coat. So like I said, here my goal was to use up the leftover paint, but I got inspired. And so I just kept going and before I knew it, the page was done. This whole page took around 30 minutes. Now I have the key card in hand and I decide to grab some Prussian blue. I put it on my palette and I am putting it on the edge of the card and just making line marks, hashtag marks, on the page and I'm loving the way that Prussian blue plays with that cadmium red mixed with that brilliant purple. If you've never used this color combo, try it out. It, it really looks so good. Especially with a little bit of white in there. OMG. Now working in my accidental art journal, quite often this happens. I have no expectations, there's no risk, and it just seems to open the floodgates of creativity and I always end up with something I love. So here I'm gonna add some texture using this Songs of the Sea double texture stamp set from Stamperia. Now I got this from Ninny's Napkins. She might still have some of the Songs of the Sea, but this one, it doesn't have, it really doesn't have to be used for ocean or sea. It's a good basic texture stamp and that's how I'm going to use them. And I'm not stamping with archival ink, I'm stamping with acrylic paint. Here I'm using the one that looks like mermaid scales and I'm just, brayering on white acrylic paint and stamping with it. I want that nice organic look and I'm just loving how that goes as the third layer at it. Then I grab the other stamp and I'm going to do the same brayering on this time with Prussian blue and again just here and there. So this is the fourth layer. And that's what you want to do on an art journal page. You want to build layers. You have your base coat color and then the stamping or stenciling that you do or collaging adds other layers and you just build up interest and create an interesting background. Waste not, want not. So I have some leftover paint. So I grab another journal and my brayer and I'm just brayering on that Prussian blue. Now the, the pages were crinkled because they were gessoed. So that gives an interesting pattern. Then I'm just getting off the paint off of the stamp using up every little last bit. So now I have another page that's already broken and ready for, well, whatever I come up with. So I want to even out a little bit of this page. So I grab the Brilliant Purple and I'm just adding it to some areas that are a little bit duller, a little bit whiter than I want. You could do the same thing with white if I wanted to add white space here. So you can add as little or as much as you want. 
tweaking the colors to match what you see in your head. So here is the napkin and you can see the small focal image. So if this was a stamped image, same thing. You need to add to it. You need to combine it with something else. You need to give it weight. And I'm going to show you one way or a couple ways of how to use these small scale focal image successfully on an art journal page. So I'm going to add weight to it by mounting it on something that's larger. And here I'm using these triangular shapes and I'm putting three of them on the page. I have templates cut circles, hexagons, these triangles, different shapes to use for this purpose, to give weight to smaller scale focal images, be they stamps or from a napkin. So here I'm just tracing them out with my ink tense pencil. In, I'm using a blue because I know that's going to go well with the background. It's not going to distort any of the colors. And then I am giving it a wash of color. Now when I started, I'm thinking maybe I'm just going to do a light wash where I can still see whatever the patterns are behind, but it's really pushed back. And as I get going, I'm realizing that I like it to be more opaque. So I'm going to apply several layers of white paint, slightly thinned out. And you want to dry in between layers, otherwise it tends to get sticky and goopy and you won't get as smooth of a surface. So I am just painting those triangles out. Now again, you could do the same thing with circles, waves, any shape. But you're going to, we're going to glue the focal image or mount the focal image onto these and together they make a larger focal image. So in this case, this is about an eight by 10 page, but that's the way to make use, make use of smaller scale elements. And you'll, if you look at napkins, a lot of napkins have multitudes of elements and you can use them in this way combining them, giving them weight. So I put three. So here is this napkin and I got this from ninniesnapkins.com. There's a link in the description box if you're interested in looking for art journaling mixed media. So what you want to do is harvest the elements, the small scale elements from the napkin. So I'm just rough cutting. I've left the plies on for the cutting. It's a little easier and then I can position them on that white. And instantly that focal image has more weight, more substance to it. It's not going to get lost in the page. And once I've cut it out, I can manipulate it and work on my actual composition. I can even bring in focal images from different napkins. So now that I know where I want to put them, I am taking off the two excess plies and I am going to glue them down, in this case, the lavender. Now I picked this lavender because the colors in that lavender perfectly match the colors in the background. But if I put it right on the background, it would get lost. Putting it on the white makes them pop. You're not losing your focal image. So I'm happy with my composition. So I'm going to grab my fluid matte medium. This is from Liquitex. Putting a good coat underneath, putting the napkin on top and coat on the surface. And here I've decided to layer up two. I kind of overlap them a little bit. 
but I'm really liking how this looks. And the white this that I put on the back there really makes everything stand out. So once that was dry, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, you know, I want to put a fourth one up here. Sometimes you don't know till you know. So I grab the template, trace around it and repeat, just painting out the white. We still get all the benefit of that beautiful background that we created. We still see all those colors, the, the textures, the visual layers, but now our focal image also stands out. I was thinking of putting the sentiment at the top, in that top one, but then opted to put, just like I did at the bottom triangle, two sprigs of that lavender from that napkin. I'm not sure this napkin's available at Nini's Napkins anymore, but I know that she has other lavender napkins that would work. So one, my newest sentiment pack that's just getting ready to be uploaded to Nini's Napkins where you can get the digital download. This is called Choosing Joy. It is my word of 2024. I shrunk it down and you know I kind of put it at an angle. Now it's time to do the finishing. So I grab my ink tense block. This is a blue, a dark blue. And I'm tracing around those triangles and activating it. So it gives kind of a blue halo, which ties into the Prussian blue that we used in the background and it's gonna make those triangles pop a little bit more. And I just gradually work my way around. I can always add more. I could do this using my floating acrylic usual shading technique, but I opted to show you another way. You can use watercolor pencils at this stage if you want it. The difference with the ink tense blocks, they are permanent when they're dry, but this is the last layer and I'm not putting any wet medium on top. So watercolor pencils would have worked if that's something I have. I'm really liking the four triangles and this is the first time I've used the triangles in this way. I've used circles a lot to add weight to my focal image or waves, but the triangles not so much, but I think you might see me playing with them in future pages. And now I'm just edging the page and I'm just using that ink tense pencil the same way. Just scribbling it on and activating it and you can see that blue just frames it. I opted not to use black. I thought the black was a little too harsh and I just wanted to add more of that blue in there. So this page is almost done. Get ready for a surprise because I thought I was done and here's where it sits. And then I saw an image on my table with this fairy and I put it in the middle and I really like that. So you could put something in the middle. I haven't decided this isn't glued down yet. Should I do it? Should I glue it down? Let me know in the comment section. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Give this color scheme a try. It is an absolute winner.